by firing, for example, that is the valve switch one. So only switch one and uh, the, uh, the corresponding capacitor is in the uh, uh, working. And simultaneously, the current in the PCR, okay, the current in the PCR, that is ILF of alpha, okay, is set by the appropriate firing, appropriate firing delay angle, that is alpha, so that the sum of rare output of the TSC, okay, sum of the rare output of the TSC, so generally it is negative, and that of the TCR, it is positive, so TSC means negative and TCR means positive, equals the capacitor output required for that interval, okay. Next, in the second, third and fourth and ninth interval, nth intervals, okay, the output is controllable in the range of, firstly, QC maximum by N2, 2 QC maximum by N, uh, next interval, 2 QC maximum by N2, 3 QC maximum by N, and so on, N minus 1 into QC maximum by N2, QC maximum range, by switching in the second, third and third. So on, nth capacitor band, and using the PCR to observe the surplus capacitor value, okay, and using the PCR to observe the surplus capacitor value. Next, so by being able to switch the capacitor bands in and out, that means uh, connecting and disconnecting, in and out means connecting and disconnecting with one cycle of the applied AC voltage. So the maximum surplus capacitor value in the total output range can be restricted to the produced by one capacitor band. And thus, theoretically, the TCR should have the same value rating as the TSC. Okay, so if we want to switch the capacitor bands in and out, okay, within the cycle, within one cycle of the applied AC voltage, so we have to take the maximum surplus capacitor value, that means QC maximum, in the total output range, can be restricted to the producer by one capacitor band. Not considering all N branches, only here we are considering only one. Okay. So, and thus theoretically, the PCR should have the, that means the thyristor control reactor should have the same wire writing as the TSC, that is the thyristor switching capacitor. Okay, however, to ensure that the switching conditions at the endpoints of the intervals are not indeterminate. Okay, endpoints of the intervals are not indeterminate. So, the wire writing of the PCR has to be somewhat larger in practice than that of the one TSC in order to provide enough overlap between the switching in and switching out wire levels. Okay, so here to ensure that the switching operators, that is the switching conditions at the end points, at the end points of the intervals are not indeterminate. Okay, why because the wire writing of the PC has to be somewhat larger in practice than that of the one PSC in order to provide enough Overlap between the switching in and switching out wire intervals, wire levels. So here I am drawing a characteristic diagram between wire demand versus wire output characteristics of this arrangement that is TSC and TCR type wire generator. It is shown in the next diagram. So this is the diagram for that one. Okay. So as seen, so by observing the diagram, the capacitive wire output that is QC. Okay, the capacitor bar output QC. So in the right hand, in the left hand side, we have the QC demand, and on the right hand side, we have the QL demand. Okay. So here, so as seen, the capacitor bar output QC is changed in a step like manner by the TSCs to approximate the bar demand with a net capacitor bar surplus and the relatively small inductive bar output of the PCR, that is QL. It is used to cancel the surplus capacitor wires. So, if you observe this diagram, we have the step by step uh, variable of the demand of the QC and QL. So, here, so actually, we have uh, three capacitors and one reactor band. Okay. So, on the left side, we have the capacitors in and out. Capacitors in and out. So, at the time, if the C3 is in, that means uh, the C3 capacitor is in all connection, so the waveform is like this, and after that, it uh, delivers the reactive current of the particular capacitor is Q, 
and the east is not the first result for the C3 result. We have one there, like that, C3, C3, and C2, and C2 out, and C1 in, and C1 out, like this we have, the QC demand and QL demand, and finally we have the total capacitor uh, reactive power value, that is Q is equal to V into, uh, formula is there, now, like that we have the uh, reactive power demand on uh, the factor side and the uh, inductor side, okay. So in a way, this is Q could be considered as a special fixed capacitor. Okay, in, in a way, this is Q could be considered as a special fixed capacitor and tries to control reactor arrangement that is FCTCR arrangement. So in which the rating of the capacitor reactor is kept relatively small. That is 1 by n times the maximum capacitor. So relatively small. And the rating of the capacitor is changed in discrete steps. Okay. The rating of the capacitor is changed in discrete steps so as to keep the operation of the PCR within its normal control range. PCR within its normal control range. So that's why I am taking this one. And next. So next I will show the functional control scheme for this TSC and TCF type large generator. So it provides three major functions. So I will show the diagram after that you will understand this one. So here I am taking the functional control scheme. So this is the functional control scheme for the TSC TCF type large generator. So actually this one is used for the three functionalities. Three major functions it provides. First one is by using this functional control scheme for the TSC PCF type branch generator, it determines the number of TSC branches needed to be switched in. It determines the number of TSC branches needed to be switched in to approximate the required capacitor output current. Okay, required capacitor output current. So that's why here I am taking the first one that is a required capacitor and reactive current computation. Okay, first this one. Okay, so and compute the amplitude of the inductive current needed to cancel the surplus capacitor current. And also it computes the amplitude of the inductive current needed to cancel the surplus capacitor range. So here I am taking TSC1 on and off control. So TSC1 on and off control and TCR firing reliable control. Okay. So these are used to control the switching of the TSC branches in a transient free manner. Okay, control the switching of the TSC branches in a TS transient free manner by using this TSC on and off control. And next we have TCR fine reliable control. So this one is used to vary the current in the TCR by firing reliable control. So it is used to vary the current of the TCR by firing reliable control. For that one, I am using this PCR fine reliable control. So these two are connected to the required capacitor and reactor current computation. Okay. So here, you, if you observe this one, we have TSCN on request and TSC2 on request. So here, uh, already we have the TSC1 on and off control, and next we have the TSC2 on request, and uh, similarly we have the TSC2 off request, and it, Next we have the TSC3 on request and TSC3 off request and next we have the so TSC on request like that we have the uh, control strategies for these capacitors that too here we are in the n number of capacitor bands that's why I am taking this thing and next so here from the TSC1 on and off control I am taking a parallel bar so that is TSC1 that is named as TSC1 and this arrangement consists of one capacitor, one reactor that is L1 or inductor L1 and this TSC1 arrangement consists of one capacitor and one thyristor bar and one reactor. Similarly and so on I am taking the lastly the TCR arrangement. So this one consists of one reactor, it consists of L by 2 value and it produces the current that is IL of alpha and one thyristor bar. So this thyristor bar is connected to the PCR firing reliable control. Okay, and next is our 
fund reactor is connected to the precise sugar and these arrangement is connected to the terminal voltage or load voltage of this arrangement. Okay. So here this is the functional piece and next the first function is relatively simple. The first function is relatively simple that is the input current reference that is IQ reference. So if you observe the diagram I am taking the input current reference, IQ reference that is connected to the required capacitor and reactor current competition. So here I am taking the input current reference, IQ reference uh, representing the magnitude of the requested output current is divided by the amplitude IC of the current. So this is here we have the IC of the current. So here I am using the PSC1 means we have the IC1 current. Okay. So that means the output current is divided by the amplitude IC of the current that a PSC branch would draw at the given amplitude B of the AC voltage. Okay. And next the result rounded to the next higher integer gives the number of capacitor banks needed. So after that we have the result. So that gives the um, how much next higher integer we have to use that gives the number of capacitor banks needed. So how many capacitor banks needed for this operation? It will decide. Okay, next the difference in magnitude between the sum of the accurate capacitor current uh, that is sigma ICN and the reference current that is IQ reference gives the amplitude that is the ALF of fundamental reactive current required. Fundamental reactive current required. And next, so next I will show the another diagram. So the basic logic for the second function that is switching of the PSC branches, that is switching of the PSC branches is detailed in figure 5.24. So this one, this is also the functional logic for the implementation of transient free switching strategy for the PSC. This is the second functionality we are using. Okay, so here we are using some logic gates, under gate and R gate we are using, and these gates are given to the firing force generator and the under gate, uh, under gate logic is given to the valve voltage and capacitor voltage polarity measurement and this one is given to the capacitor connection and this firing force generator is given to the one thyristor valve which consists of one reactor. Okay, this thyristor valve is used as a switch and it produces the uh, voltage of the switch and capacitor voltage of the capacitor and the uh, inductor value. So here is the PSC terms on that means R is equal to 1 and VSW is equal to 1 R and PT is equal to 1 that is uh, power at the transient free condition. Okay. So this is equal to 1 and VPOL V T Y L is equal to 1 and uh, if V S W is 1 then this is equal to V if P T is equal to 1 then V is equal to V and V polarity is equal to 1 then sin V is equal to sin V C that means there is a positive or negative both signs are equal for the normal voltage and the capacitor voltage ok like this the functional logic for the implementation of transient switching strategy for the P S is worked Okay, so this follows two simple rules for transient free switching. Okay, that is summarized like in this one. So these are the conditions for transient free switching for the PSC and uh, with a different uh, residual voltages. So here we are using two cases. So if VC is less than or equal to V, then VC is equal to V, or this switch is equal to zero, and case two. If VC is greater than V, then alpha is equal to 0 and VSW is equal to minimum. So, on the left side, we have the arrangement of this one. So, here we have the ice valve which is used as a switch, and this, uh, this consists of one capacitor and one inductor. So, the capacitor consists of the voltage across the capacitor, and the inductor it consists of the inductance of the capacitor. Okay, and it, uh, these are all going to the capacitor. Uh, voltage, supply voltage. So in the second case, the delay angle is zero. At the time, we have our waveform is like this. Okay. And next, uh, if the VC is less than or equal to V, at the time, the 
voltage because the switch is zero. At that time, the capacitor voltage is equal to the normal voltage. Okay, like that we have the permissions. Okay. Next, that is, it has switched the capacitor band when the voltage across the thyristor valve becomes zero. Okay, voltage across the thyristor valve, that is VSW is equal to zero, or uh, when the thyristor valve voltage is minimum, that is VSW is equal to minimum, we have to switch the capacitor band uh, depending upon uh, the switching operation. So if VSW is equal to zero, one operation will perform. If VSW is equal to minimum, one operation will perform. So that is already I showed in the 5.16 diagram. Okay. And next, the actual time of generation for the thyristor in the PSC valve is similar to that of used for the TCR, with the exception that a continuous gate drive is usually provided to maintain to maintain continuity in conduction when the current is transferred from one thyristor spring carrying current of one polarity that is positive to the other string carrying current of opposite polarity that is negative, that is negative. Like this we have the uh, arrangements for the firing for generation for the thyristors in the TSC valve and the TCR valve. Okay. Then next, coming to the third function, that is TCR firing reliable control. This one is identical to that used in the fixed capacitor thyristor control reactor scheme that is also shown in the uh, previous concepts of the diagram that is 5.19. This is the diagram. At that time, we are using the thyristor firing delay control. Okay, it consists of one feedback. So, this feedback is connected to the current control delay angle converter that is IL of alpha is equal to K into F of alpha. And this one is connected to the synchronous timing circuit. And it is given to the final pulse generator. And these are the arrangement is given to the one thyristor valve and uh, it consists of one reactor, this is the TCR branches, okay, TCR, that is thyristor control reactor, and this arrangement, the whole arrangement is given to the capacitor, okay, and after that we have the wave function like this, so this is the functional control scheme for the fixed capacitor, that is this one, last one, okay, fixed capacitor and TCR type generator, and the associated wave function, the basic operating principles like this we have the arrangement. Okay, so by taking the reference of this one, we are uh, explaining the third function of this one. Okay, it's similar to the fixed capacitor TCR type, that's why I am taking the diagram. So the operation of the TSC TCR type that generator with the three capacitor bands is illustrated in the uh, coming the oscillogram. I will show that one also. So these are the oscillograms we have. That means also graphic waveforms illustrated in the operation of the TSC TCR type static bar generator. So to observe this diagram, we have to, uh, to observe these waveforms, we have to use the CRO. So on the bottom of this one, we have the inductive current, and uh, uh, above, above this one, we have the capacitor current, and uh, finally, we have the uh, total current in this one that is I is equal to combination of capacitor current and uh, inductive current. And finally, we have the back demand that either will lack, so that is one lack to lead. Okay, like that, we have the actual gas waveform, uh, which is listed in the operation of PSC TCR type transfer generator. Okay, so these the actual graphs show the reactive current reference that is the reference in the IQ reference, the total output current that is IQ and the current IE drawn by the thyristor system capacitor band and the current IE drawn by the thyristor control reactor these are all shown on the diagram okay next so from the black box viewpoint the TSC TCR type band generator similarly to its FC TCR that is fixed capacitor thyristor control reactor counterpart can be considered as a controllable reactive admittance so which when connected to the AC system Faithfully follows an alternate input reference that is reactor admittance of current signals. Input reference signals are the reactor admittance of current signals. So, here an external observer monitoring, monitoring the output current generally would not be able to detect the internal capacitor switching. So, here we are using an external observer which is used to monitoring the output current 
also which is not able to detect the internal capacitor system indeed would not be able to tell whether the rad generator employs fixed or tricyclic capacitors okay like that we have to know that next so after that i will show the voltage and characteristics of pse pcf at the generator uh, shown for the two cscs so actually in this arrangement we have to take the 3 but here i am taking the two cscs okay in figure for example this is also identical to that of the fc pcf counterpart okay so this arrangement is a classic arrangement is identical to that of the previous concept that is fixed capacitor pressure control reactor counterpart so that is uh, shown like this so this is the operating ve range of the psc pcf and bar generator with the two types of fixed capacitor bands okay so in this arrangement i am taking ve characteristics so on the y axis i am taking the voltage and in the x axis i am taking the capacitor currents so in this current i am taking the capacitor current and the inductor current so the capacitor current i am taking on the left side and on the inductor current i am taking on the right side so in the middle we have the voltage okay so here from the middle uh, middle of this one i am indicating with zero so here we have the four terms one is for maximum capacitor voltage that is dc maximum so that is equal to 2 dc and after that we have the dc that is admittance of psc admittance of psc and next we have the dc maximum that is voltage limit for psc and vl maximum that is voltage limit for pcr and finally we have total voltage that is v these are the different operating vi areas of the psc pcr type bar generator so here i am taking the cross lines to fulfill this one and this order lines gives the maximum capacitor current limit and uh, maximum inductive current limit like this okay so here the response of the psc pcr type bar generator depending on the number of pc branches used may be somewhat smaller than that of this fc pcr counterpart and next this is because the maximum delay of switching in a single psc with a charged capacitor is one full cycle whereas the maximum delay of the pcr is only half of a cycle okay understand this one so the maximum delay of switching in a single psc with a charged capacitor is one full cycle whereas maximum delay of pcr is only half half of a cycle okay next so however if two or more psc branches are employed then there is a reasonable free chance that on the average one or more capacitor branch will be available with the charge of the desired polarity at the instant at which an increase in capacitor output is required okay and next this is the already i have already discussed this one and next coming to that, the transfer function of the psc pcr type bar generator is same as that of the fc pcr counterpart so this fc pcr counterpart is the previous concept of this one okay this is one of the method of the controllable bar generation so except that the maximum transfer clock that is pd can count that the capacitor output is to be increased is theoretically twice as large so it is one by f is equal to t you know this one So this time by t is equal to inverse of the frequency for single phase, and one by three of the is equal to t by three for balance of three phase operation. Okay, so here I am taking the uh, transfer function of the PSC here. This same as that of the FC PSC. Only exception is that the maximum transport lag that is PD encountered when the capacitor output is to be increased. So this is the amplitude of the. This is the amplitude of the harmonic components in the current of the PCR versus delay angle alpha. So I have already discussed in the FC PCR concept also. Okay. So same waveforms occur, but with the various delay angles alpha, with the in percentages of current. Okay. So this is the arrangement for that one. Okay. And next, I am taking. From the practical viewpoint, in the linear operating range, 
the dynamic performance of the PSC PCFF lab generator in power transfer system applications is generally indistinguishable from that of its FC PCR counterpart. So after that, I am taking the one more text diagram for the PSC PCFF lab generator that is law of success where object statistic follows from its basic operating principle that is also shown in the 5.22 diagram that is this one, this is the basic PSC TCF static card generator and its VAR demand versus VAR of statistics. So this is the first slide and I explained about these two things. Okay, and next. And next I am taking slightly below zero VAR output, all capacity banks are switched out. So at zero VAR output or slightly below the zero VAR output, all capacitor banks are switched out, the TCR current is zero or negligibly small and consequently the losses are zero or almost zero. And next as the capacity output is increasing, an increasing number of TSC banks are switched in with the TCR observing the surplus capacitor wires. Okay. That means when the capacity output is increasing, that is the increase in the number of TSC banks are switched in the TCR observing the surplus capacitor wires. So thus, with each switched in TSC band, the loss is increased by a fixed amount. Okay. So to this fixed loss, there are the added losses for the TCR. So that will give the which value from maximum to zero between successive switchings of the TSC band that is all already mentioned in the this diagram. Okay. So this is similar to the first one. But here I am taking the same uh, TSC branches that is uh, three branches and three branches consist of the uh, one TCR branch. Okay. And next we have the last versus output capacity diagram of this TSC and TCR particular generator. So the static diagram is like this. So it is in this stepwise like manner. It will Changes stepwise. Okay. So when the CS C1 is on that means capacitor 1 is on, we have the waveform like that and C2 and C3. And uh, we have the uh, reactive current of that arrangement. We have on the left side we have the capacitor arrangement and on the right side we have the inductive. So here the IQ is equal to in the capacitor side I left of alpha minus sigma and ICN and on the for the inductive IQ is equal to I level of alpha. Okay, this is the last process where of the characteristics. Okay. And next, so overall, the losses of the PSC TCF wire generator vary on the average in proportion to the wire output. In proportion with the wire output. So this type of loss characteristic is clearly advantageous in those applications in which the wire generator is used for dynamic compensation and is not required to provide high average bar output for the normally functioning power system. Okay, so if, if we want to reduce the losses of the PSA PCFA bar generator at a high capacity output, the replacement of the pressure valves mechanical breaker seems at first sight plausible. Okay, next, some of the technical literature actually uses the term mechanically switched capacitor that is MSC and pressure control reactor PCR. So MSC and PCR. So actually uh, our concept is pressure switched capacitor and pressure control reactor but, uh, but technical uh, literature actually uses the term mechanically switched capacitor that is MSC, pressure control reactor PCR. Okay, PSC, PCR and MSC, PCR like that it varies. Okay, so unfortunately although mechanically switched capacitor that is MSCs can play significant part in overall wire compensation system, the MSC PCA arrangement does not have the response nor the repeatability of operation that was slightly needed for the dynamic compensation of power system. Okay, so in the final analysis, the response of the mechanical breakers employed to determine mostly the elapsed time between the capacitor wire demand and the actual capacitor wire output. So this is the concept uh, for the method of controllable wire 
information that is PSC PCR. Okay, in the next class I am going to discuss another topics. Okay, thank you, thank you for watching this video.